In this short video, we will cover a workflow using the distributed rendering feature and utilizing multiple workstations for rendering an image. First, let's create a fresh set of render settings and set the renderer to V-Ray. We need to make a few adjustments in the render settings we created. Let's start by activating the V-Ray frame buffer from the options tab so that later on we have access to the post-processing features. I will also scroll down and navigate to Print Info to Console and make sure to have it checked or activated as well. This way we will get information about our connection with the rest of the machines used for rendering. Lastly, we need to activate distributed rendering itself. There are three important settings we need to pay attention to, starting with the port number. The default number is 2020. 7 and unless you need to there is no reason to change it however it is important to remember that the port number of your local machine must always match with every workstation you plan to use for distributed rendering the render on localhost tick box is self-explanatory and you should consider turning it off when you plan on using your own workstation while the rest are rendering your final image or sequence now we need to specify the workstations we want to use. There are two ways we can do that. We can use the IP address of a machine or we can use its name. I will make sure to have both approaches for this particular scene but keep in mind that entering the IP address is the recommended way since it is more reliable. Now that everything is ready on our side, we need to start V-Ray standalone application on the remote workstation. After you sign in, navigate to the Start menu and scroll down to the V-Ray for Cinema 4D folder. Inside you will find an executable file named Launch V-Ray Render Slave. Starting that file will prompt the interface of V-Ray Standalone and the remote machine is now ready to receive the scene from your local workstation. Please note that in case you don't find a V-Ray for Cinema 4D folder and a render slave shortcut in it, you are most likely missing the standalone installation completely. This means you need to download V-Ray and go through the process of installing it again. Let's use another render node and this time we are going to specify it by using the name of the workstation. There are a few workflow tips worth mentioning just in case you have native C4D shaders or materials. You can easily convert a texture into a V-Ray bitmap using a convert function located in the commands menu. You could also keep your existing C4D materials and textures and bake them right before sending the scene for rendering. Just choose saving to file from the convert and bake dropdowns. If that's the case, make sure to keep your shaders in 2D texture space. Now that the remote machines are running V-Ray standalone, we simply need to hit render. If you recall from earlier, we activated an option to give us feedback if we are connected to our render nodes or not. In order to see that, we need to open up the console from the extensions menu and scroll down until we see a line starting with DR host. The next few lines will state the connection status and we can be certain that we are connected. Depending on the size of the scene, it may take a few moments before you see the buckets from all the workstations kick in. Now that the image has finished rendering, we can add a basic color correction and play around with some of the post-production effects such as bloom and glare. Now that you have seen how to use distributed rendering in V-Ray for Cinema 4D, we will explore more features and their use cases in upcoming lessons.